Myanmar has been trapped in cycles of violence and associated human rights violations and abuses for much of its existence. The repressive control of the Myanmar military, known as the Tat Madao, and the manner in which it and other security forces conduct their operations across the country lie at the heart of the problem. These operations are based on policies, tactics, and conduct that consistently fail to respect international law and deliberately target civilians. They are in flagrant disregard of the life, property, and well-being of civilians. They are marked by extreme levels of brutality and disproportionality. They are in the pursuit of deeply discriminatory and exclusionary visions, primarily affecting ethnic and religious minorities. This results in the consistent patterns of serious human rights violations and violations of international humanitarian law in Kachin, Shan, and Rakhine states outlined in our report. The military's contempt for human life, dignity, and freedom for international law in general should be a cause of concern for the entire population of Myanmar and to the international community as a whole. We found it deeply disturbing to see how the Myanmar population is being misinformed by its authorities and how it is being exposed to divisive rhetoric. The human rights violations in Myanmar are fueled by the efforts of the Myanmar authorities to silence critical voices and the amplification of hateful rhetoric that emboldens perpetrators. The Myanmar authorities have fostered a climate in which hate speech thrives, human rights violations are legitimized, and incitement to discrimination and violence facilitated. The way in which sexual violence has been taking place in Myanmar is particularly brutal, and take it from a former special rapporteur on violence against women. The scale, brutality, and systematic nature of rape and violence indicate that they are part of a deliberate strategy to intimidate, terrorize, or punish the civilian population. They are used as a tactic of war. That's we found include rape, gang rape, sexual slavery, forced nudity, and mutilations. Similar patterns of sexual violence have been reported in Myanmar for at least three decades. During the clearance operations of 2017 in Rakhine, victims of sexual violence were subsequently often killed. I met and spoke with many survivors of sexual violence immediately after the violence of August 2017. The interviews with survivors were undertaken in privacy and following strict protocols. This level of normalization of sexual violence and of attacks against children is only possible in a climate of long-standing impunity. This then brings me to the more general issue of responsibility. The main perpetrator of the serious human rights violations outlined in our report including of the acts of sexual violence, is the Myanmar military. The Tatmadaw Command exercises effective control over its troops as well as over their armed actors deployed in military operations. In our report, we have listed the names of the highest level of command. In doing so, we seek to underscore their responsibility. Responsibility starts at the top, we believe that these individuals must be investigated and prosecuted for the crimes committed in Myanmar. With regard to the civilian authorities in Myanmar, the constitutional powers afford little scope for controlling the actions of the Tatmadaw. Nor is there any indication that they directly participate in planning or implementing the security operations or were part of the command structure. However, their acts and omissions, the civilian population have contributed to the commission of atrocity crimes. The mission has concluded that criminal investigation and prosecution is warranted, focusing on the top Tatmadaw generals in relation to the three categories of crimes under international law, genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. 
We have examined the period since 2011. The violations we have identified during this period are part of a history of abusive military conduct going back at least half a century. Their continual repetition is the result of the complete immunity accorded to the military commanders and the virtually complete impunity of troops. The military as an institution in Myanmar has never been held accountable. The provisions of Myanmar law, the structure of the legal system and the judiciary's lack of independence and of legal competence make it impossible for the domestic legal system to deliver justice for victims of human rights violations by the military. Similarly, domestic inquiries and investigations into allegations of the most serious human rights violations, eight inquiries and investigations since 2011 in Rakhine State alone, have without exception lacked independence, impartiality and rigour and have been ineffective. Expecting justice and truth from any Myanmar domestic process is simply naive. There will, there is no will, and there is no capacity. Yet accountability is essential if Myanmar is to escape a destiny of violence and serious human rights violation. Without accountability, the history of the past half century will be repeated again and again impunity has demonstrably contributed to the validation of deeply oppressive and discriminatory conduct. It has enabled recurrence of violations, it has emboldened perpetrators, and it has silenced victims. This must stop.